What's up guys? Welcome to Plumbing School. And this is how you T-drill. So I suppose the first question best to ask is what exactly is T-drilling or what is a T-drill? So what I have in my hands is a factory made manifold. So a manifold uh, for all intents and purposes is a larger pipe that conveys branches to smaller piping. So in order to purchase something like this that's pre-made, um, this is actually half of what it was. This manifold contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight outlets. It's an inch and a quarter manifold with eight three quarter inch uh, copper pipe outlets. And this was actually uh, doubled at one point, but in order to purchase something like this pre-manufactured, um, it costs a pretty penny. It's well over a hundred dollars uh, to pick up the entire length of this pre-manufactured manifold. So the big question is that if you need to um, manufacture a manifold system or you're working on a project that involves uh, manifold outlets, what option or alternative do we have other than purchasing a pre-manufactured manifold? Um, one option you have is, of course, to purchase regular inch and a quarter piping, cut your piping as required, place a T, solder the T, place your outlet, place another T, solder it, outlet, on and on and on and on. Uh, as many of you may know, this is quite labor intensive and labor equals high cost in the plumbing trade. Um, so one quite ingenious uh, tool manufacturer came out with what's referred to as the T-drill. And what a T-drill allows you to do is actually drill into an existing pipe and extrude a collar to act as the branch for that uh, pipe's manifold or that branch out branch's outlet. Now, um, in order to extrude, uh, to be able to extrude, uh, you will need a particular minimum thickness of piping. In the plumbing trade, we typically refer to them as types. The thinnest type is type DWV, which stands for drainage, waste, and venting. Um, then that's followed by type M, which is the thinnest wall that's allowed to be used to convey water pressure piping. Um, then we have type L and type K, which are more... Uh, predominant in commercial applications. But in order to properly extrude a, a branch from a main line, you will need a minimum diameter type L piping. So it's DWV, M, L, K, in order from thinnest to thickest. So if we're gonna do that, that's what you're going to require. The big benefit of purchasing a T-drill, uh, if you do uh, have a lot of those projects that require manifold outlets, uh, it could ultimately pay for itself. The drawback of uh, purchasing a T-drill is that it could be quite expensive. Uh, so really, it's up to you to determine whether your investment is going to be returned on the projects that you have that involve copper manifold outlets. But nonetheless, whether you decide to invest in a T-drill or not is still a really, really cool thing to witness. So let's do some T-drilling. Upon first glance, you may notice that the tool is shaped very much like a D-handle hammer drill or even a traditional reciprocating saw, but it's far from either of those. In essence, it is still a drill, but you may notice that it has no reverse switch. The other obvious item is a set of funny looking forks or prongs protruding from the front of the drill, which we'll get into in a moment. There's a lever at the side, which allows you to switch the tool's function from drilling mode to extrusion mode, which is depicted by what appears to be a drill bit with spikes coming out of its side. And that's where the magic happens. This is largely what actually separates a tool from a regular drill and allows the walls of the pipe to be extruded outward. Because we'll be trying to recreate the prefabricated inch and a quarter by three quarter inch manifold we already have, we'll be inserting the three quarter inch extrusion bit shown here. And in order to do so, we simply turn the T-drill's collar, drop in the extrusion head, and return the collar until the extrusion head locks in place. Now these extruding teeth should be retracted inside the drill bit each time you commence drilling into the manifold pipe. If your teeth look like this, then you cannot initialize the process. If the teeth are extended outward, simply press down on the extruding head and turn it until the teeth are retracted. As well, make sure that the extrusion switch is in the retracted position, which will allow the two forks to retract inward as well. So for this demonstration, or to actually do the work, you will require something that is rigid enough to keep the pipe in place while you uh, maneuver the T-drill. Unless you're drilling in place, uh, piping that's already existing in place, um, if you are creating a manifold, you will need something the like of uh, a pipe stand or a pipe vise 
to hold it. So this is our trusty rigid 425 pipe vise. So we'll proceed to gently tighten our piping. Not too tight because you can easily kink and squish the copper piping. This isn't steel piping we're dealing with. So we have to be a little more delicate with it. Um, have the end of the piping come out uh, on a mount that's comfortable for you to work with. And once we do that, we have our T-drill, which we've already prepared by inserting the three quarter inch bit. And we make sure again, we double check to make sure that your lever is in the closed position. So we proceed to place the T-drill on the location, on the pipe where we want the manifold outlet to be drilled and extruded. So this is basically a two-step process. The first step will be drilling into the pipe. And again, we'll be using type L. This is the minimum thickness that you can use in order to uh, make sure that um, your pipe is extruded properly. Because if you use any thinner, your wall will be too thin. There's already very little material that we're dealing with here. So we want to make sure that the pipe is thick enough. And that's a minimum type L. Once we have it secured, we start up our T-drill. Now we're fully inserted into the pipe. This is where the magic happens. We press on the collar and turn if you're facing it in a clockwise direction. That will open up the pins. We now flip this lever into the extrude position and proceed to drill. Just press the button and watch what happens. There's our three quarter inch outlet. Now let's take a look at that extrusion process once again, but in super awesome slow motion. Now we're not done yet because we'll need to be inserting a three quarter inch pipe into here. But the problem is that our three quarter inch pipe we'll be inserting as a branch does not have a stop on it to prevent it from going too far in. As well, it doesn't have the curvature to prevent it from obstructing flow in the primary manifold. So there's a tool for that as well that comes with the T-drill. And let's look at that. The first thing you'll notice about our notcher and dimpler is that it's got a lever handle and that lever handle rotates. Not only does the lever handle rotate, but so does the head. Around the head, you'll notice that you'll have different numbers indicating the diameter of pipe we're working with. Now, in plumbing, when we refer to copper piping, we refer to its inside diameter. In this case, because we're making an inch and a quarter by three quarter inch manifold, that's three quarter inch on the inside and basically seven eighths on the outside. So these numbers refer to inside diameter of piping. This is what we want. So what we're going to do is find our three quarter inch and we're going to align it so that it's even with the front and back of the notcher and dimpler. Once we do that, we'll also align our handle so that it's also parallel to uh, the size that we're notching. Notching and dimpling is a rather simple process. We take our manifold outlet or our branch, make sure that you already deburr it using a proper deburring tool ahead of time, because once you do this, it will be more difficult to deburr. So we place the end of the pipe that's going into our manifold, like so, and we proceed to press down on the lever, just like that. And if you look closely, You'll notice that this is slightly beveled inward now. Okay, that's the notching part. It's actually notched. A portion of the pipe has actually been removed. As well, there's a little tiny dimple. What that dimple does is it prevents this piping from fully entering into the manifold. 
Now we did one side, we're going to have to do the other side. And of course, we're going to have to make sure that we do the exact opposite side because this is our direction of flow in our manifold. So we want to make sure that this notch is also on the other side, just the same. So when we insert our piping for the second time, make sure that this notch is facing upward and proceed. Just like hole punching paper. And there's our notch and our dimple. Pretty cool, huh? And now that we have notched and dimpled our pipe in such a lovely fashion, we can proceed to insert the new branch into our extruded collar, making sure that the dimples are facing the direction of flow of the manifold. Because if we put it, put it the other way, then we will surely be obstructing the pipe. So we insert like so. And now what happens is, make sure you align it accordingly, straight. So this dimple should be facing this side. This dimple should be facing this way. What happens is if we look inside, there is zero obstruction caused from the branch. And that's what we want. One other thing I need to point out is that simple solder or what we refer to as soft solder will not work well on this joint. Because we have very little extruded material here, we need something much stronger than soft solder or we refer to as lead free or 95.5. Um, so in this case, we will need to braise the joint to ensure that it is properly strengthened. Because if we look at it, if we take it out, you'll notice it goes in ever so little. There's not much there. So we want to make sure that this doesn't pop out on us and break on us. And a braised joint is significantly stronger than a soft solder joint. But that's a video for another occasion. And that's how you T-drill. If you like this video, please be sure to plunge that like button and subscribe to this channel, Plumbing's Cool. If there's anything you'd like to see in the future or any other cool videos or ideas you might have, please leave your comments in the section below and we'll try to make it happen. Thanks for watching and take care.